2 Kings chapter 18 Now it occurred in the third year of Hosea, the son of Elah, reigning as king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, ascended the throne as king of Judah. Hezekiah was twenty-five years old when he commenced his reign, ruling for twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. In the eyes of the Lord, Hezekiah followed the righteous path, just as his father David had done. He took action to dismantle the high places, shatter the idols, cut down the groves, and even broke apart the bronze serpent that Moses had made. This serpent had been venerated by the Israelites, burning incense to it. Hezekiah named it Nehushtan, denouncing its false significance. Hezekiah put his trust in the Lord, God of Israel, and as a result, he distinguished himself as a king surpassing all before and after him in Judah. Hezekiah remained steadfast in his devotion to the Lord, adhering faithfully to his commandments as conveyed by Moses. Due to his unwavering faith, the Lord blessed Hezekiah, granting him success in all his endeavors. Hezekiah even defied the king of Assyria, refusing to serve him. Hezekiah's triumph extended to his military exploits, as he conquered the Philistines, extending his dominion as far as Gaza and its borders, from the watchtower to the fortified city. In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which coincided with the seventh year of Hosea, son of Elah, reigning as king of Israel, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, laid siege to Samaria and besieged it. After three years, the Assyrians successfully overtook Samaria, leading to its fall in the sixth year of Hezekiah's reign, which marked the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel. As a result, the king of Assyria exiled the Israelites to Assyria, relocating them to Hala, Haber by the river Gozan, and the cities of the Medes. The cause of this tragedy was the Israelites' refusal to obey the voice of the Lord their God, as they consistently violated his covenant and disregarded the commands of Moses, his servant. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, targeted and captured all the fortified cities of Judah. Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent a message to the king of Assyria, acknowledging his offense and requesting a withdrawal. He agreed to pay a hefty sum, and the king of Assyria demanded three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. To meet this demand, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and the pillars that he himself had overlaid, surrendering them to the king of Assyria. Furthermore, the king of Assyria sent his representatives, Tartan, Rabsaris, and Rabshake, to Jerusalem from Lachish, accompanied by a large army. They positioned themselves by the conduit of the upper pool, located in the highway of the Fuller's Field. Upon their arrival, Hezekiah's officials, including Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, the overseer of the household, Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came forth to meet them. Rabshake addressed Hezekiah's representatives, challenging the confidence that Hezekiah had placed in resistance against Assyria. He belittled Hezekiah's reliance on Egypt's support, comparing it to leaning on a fragile reed that would only lead to injury. He questioned Hezekiah's trust in the Lord, pointing out that Hezekiah had eradicated the high places and altars, replacing them with worship at the altar in Jerusalem. Rabshake demanded that Hezekiah offer pledges to the king of Assyria, promising to provide two thousand horses if Hezekiah could provide riders for them. He questioned the logic of relying on Egypt's military might, suggesting that it would be futile against even the weakest of Assyria's commanders. He claimed that the Lord himself had commanded Assyria's invasion against Judah. Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah asked Rabshak to speak in Aramaic instead of Hebrew, as they wanted the message to be conveyed privately to them rather than to the people on the wall. Rabshak, however, raised his voice and addressed the people in Hebrew, attempting to undermine Hezekiah's credibility, and so doubt about the Lord's ability to save them. He warned the people not to be deceived by Hezekiah's promises of deliverance, asserting that Hezekiah would not be able to rescue them from Assyria's grasp. He advised them to disregard Hezekiah's counsel to trust in the Lord, proposing instead that they make an agreement with Assyria. In exchange, they would be allowed to enjoy the fruits of their own land and be taken to a land similar to their own. 
Rabshake mocked the gods of the other nations that Assyria had conquered, asking where these gods were now. Despite this provocation, the people remained silent, as instructed by Hezekiah's command. Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah returned to Hezekiah, sharing the details of Rabshakeh's message. 